We have Nalima on the line from Youth Power Learning and Youth Lead. We're also supported by Rachel Stepka, who manages communications, Maria Brindelmeyer, who is the coordinator for Youth Lead, and Cassandra Jeffy, who is the director of Youth Power Learning overall. If you're not um, familiar with Youth Lead and Youth Power Learning, Youth Lead is a new global platform for young changemakers that was started as an activity under the USAID-funded Youth Power Learning Project. Youth Power Learning is focused on sharing knowledge, learning tools, best practices, and what works in positive youth development, or PYD. We define PYD in the following way. Youth should have assets, the ability to leverage those assets, i.e. agency, and the ability to contribute to positive change for themselves and their communities. And youth should be surrounded by an enabling environment that supports them as well. Youth Power Learning's main focus began with youth supporting organizations, so organizations that were implementing youth programs or conducting youth research. But with Youth Lead, which was launched at the World Bank's Youth Summit in December of 2018, the focus is on young people themselves between the ages of 15 and 35 years old. So the vision for Youth Lead is to become the global hub for young changemakers. The goal is to enable young changemakers to maximize their impact through networking, mentoring, and accessing information. The platform is also a great opportunity for youth from different countries, different networks, to inspire and learn from each other, connect beyond their traditional circles, and benefit from a diverse array of resources and information. And with Google Translate on every page, it is now available to a larger group of young people than ever before. We've conducted a number of activities under Youth Lead. Um, just more recently, in 2020, we selected 22 young changemakers who are leading different activities in their local communities. These are our Youth Lead Ambassadors, and we invite you to connect and engage with them on the platform. We also have a new cohort of Youth Lead Peer Advisors this year that are working closely with the Youth Lead Ambassadors in various capacities. These are graduates of the Youth Lead Ambassador Program who are offering their own mentorship skills and experiences as young entrepreneurs. Um, more recently, we also launched the Youth Lead Turning Point Contest for Young Changemakers. This is a writing contest where we invite young people to write about an important turning point in their lives that led them to become a change maker. So a turning point in this sense could be a moment in your life when you felt inspired or motivated or empowered or enabled by a person, a place, or an event. Um, so we're excited to have the submission so far. The deadline is Monday, March 6, 2020, and you can find more details on the Youth Lead platform. Lastly, I just want to mention our sponsors. We have various organizations who help promote the Youth Lead platform to their Youth Lead networks, and who also contribute resources online. Our sponsors are offering their expertise and knowledge. They help organize skill building training webinars for our Youth Lead members, um, and we're really grateful to their support for the platform. So that's a little bit about Youth Lead and some background, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Abulaji to introduce the topic of today's webinar and our speakers. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, today's topic will be, uh, we'll have a look at um, leading change through volunteering. Uh, volunteerism spans a vast array of activities at the individual, community, national, and global levels. Um, this, those activities include traditional forms of mutual aids and self-help, as well as well uh, formal service deliveries. Volunteerism also provides a way to gain uh, a sense of civic engagement and bring about positive change uh, in our local communities or in our global, in our global space. Throughout the world, uh, youth volunteers help strengthen communities, uh, build, building resilience and social cohesion as they engage and advocate for social change. In this webinar, our speaker, um, this morning, founder and executive director of um, CoAfrica, will share our insights on, topics, on the topic of volunteering and why it is important, um, the global best practices, this will also provide tips for running a successful uh, people-focused community-based uh, volunteering organization. Uh, with now, um, I'll just a, bit, a little more information about Liz. Uh, uh, Liz, like I said earlier, is the founder and executive director of Core Africa. Uh, she served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Morocco um, back in 1993 to 1995 uh, in a small Beber village and worked on, a, on an environmental sustainability project. Liz has worked for a wide range of nonprofit organizations and has served as on numerous boards of um, directors. Uh, Liz has a BA in economics and history from Boston University and a master's in public administration from NYU, Robert F. Wagner Graduate School of Public Service. Uh, we'll now hand over to Liz, who will um, also do a broader introduction about herself and also introduce us to the second speaker. Uh, she will introduce their work at uh, Co Africa and most importantly, I'll us into today's um, discussion. Please, uh, over to you. 
right. Hi. Thank you so much. We are delighted to be here. Um, let me just introduce the people that I'm sitting with. It's hard to do this. It's hard to read the room and see who's out there. But we have been seeing people joining the meeting from all over Africa, from Nigeria and Zambia and uh, Zimbabwe. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, Sitting uh, to my left is our intern. She's from Madagascar. Her name is Kaluna Andrambolasan. <laughs> She's getting a master's at NYU um, in public administration, and she has lots of volunteer experience as well. Um, and our other featured speaker is Bubakar Diallo. He was a Core Africa volunteer in the very first group in Senegal. Um, and I just want to say a little bit about myself, and then I'm going to ask Bubakar to talk a little bit about himself, and then we'll get into volunteerism. Um, yes, there's Bubakar. That's Bubakar teaching during his service in Senegal. Um, so I was, as Abulaji mentioned, a Peace Corps volunteer. And I'm guessing that most people out there have heard of the Peace Corps. If you have not, it's a two-year volunteer experience where Americans are given the opportunity to go abroad and live in a developing country um, for two years. And they do all sorts of projects. They teach, um, a lot of them teach English. They, they teach science and math. They also work in agriculture and in healthcare, maternal child health, they work in health and sanitation, um, environment. I was actually an environment volunteer in Morocco. This is back in the 1990s, so 25 years ago. Um, but uh, it's it's a wonderful opportunity for, um, well, Peace Corps is about Americans getting to know other countries and teaching other countries about America, but it's also about the transformative experience of service, and it's about um, helping communities by living with them for an extended period of time and helping them to help themselves. Um, and when I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Morocco 25 years ago, young Moroccans used to ask me if they could be a Peace Corps volunteer because they wanted to help their country like I was doing. And I had to say, I'm sorry, it's only for Americans. Um, and that's why I started Core Africa, because I saw so many young Africans who deserve the opportunity to help their own people. And they are certainly capable of doing so, as I'm sure a lot of people in this audience are. Um, the only thing I want to leave before I introduce Bubakar is um, that Peace Corps and Core Africa are extreme forms of volunteerism. It's it's a year, Peace Corps is two years. Core Africa is one full year um, of living in a, a far away community, um, twenty four seven. This is your life for a full year. This is not for everyone. It is it is a very extreme form of volunteerism. But I didn't join Peace Corps overnight. I had volunteered for years in many different capacities, and. Um, it was more about getting out there and just helping because I could, and it, it, led, it led to my career. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that soon. Um, right now, Bubakar, would you talk briefly about what it was like being in the very first group in Core Africa in Senegal and your group and your site? Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. And uh, thank you, everybody. <laughs> I'm Bubakar from Senegal. And uh, I was a volunteer at the first cohort in God Africa. I'm from Jigenso. Jigenso is the south of Senegal. Yes. Um, but uh, my site is, uh, my village is uh, in Jelbert, mm -hmm. in Pab Garage. Pab Garage is in the middle of uh, Senegal, yes. Mm -hmm. So um, I, uh, <laughs> I think. Uh, my experience with Core Africa is very interesting and very interesting in my community. <laughs> uh -huh. Yes, so I have my degree in uh, sociology and uh, project man management. That's what you majored in in college. Yes. So why did you join Core Africa? Uh, with Core Africa, I realized a project in Grand Bank, Serial Bank. Uh -huh. in right. the village. That was your project? Yes, okay. it was a project. What and made you join? Uh, I, um, I do many activities mm -hmm. with uh, women uh -huh. and children. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, I uh, learned 
at the school to uh -huh. leave the children. Yep. I help um, the community to promote um, human entrepreneurship. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, promote um, local uh, culture in uh, agro in agro business in um, communities um, com community um, security of food right yes right because this is what people need it yes people need it okay <laughs> this is this is a big reason way that core africa differs from the peace corps is that we go to villages with no pre-existing agenda yes we don't know what we're going to do we go there to listen and let me go to the next slide because um are we able to go to the next slide abalaji i don't think yes I you can you can switch uh, by clicking on the next button hopefully okay can, can you can you i've given you control access so you should be able to move your slides Oh, there. Oh, that's yes. Okay. This is a, this is a great slide. This is a picture actually on the bottom right of that picture is a woman named Asiachu. She's from Malawi. She was a Peace Corps trainer for many years. And then she joined Core Africa in the first group in Malawi. And then she went to go serve in Senegal. And this is a picture of her at her village in Senegal. She helped the local people excuse me, she helped the local people create a food processing program so that they could sell, package and sell the food that they were growing and make money. Um, so on the left, we have three bullet points of why people volunteer. And this, these apply to any form of volunteering. And you can, you can help somebody off across the street. You can paint the local school. You can go uh, walk dogs at the, at the local shelter. You, you can do any sort of things, or you can join Core Africa, but you do it to help, to be part of the solution. Um, you do it to find your place in the world. That's why I joined the Peace Corps, to, to get out there and see, to just be a part of what was going on and find out what you like and what you don't like, uh, what you're good at, and what, what fills your heart with passion. Um, and this helps you learn about yourself. Do you have anything you wanna say, either of you, about why you volunteered? Um, I guess, yeah, uh, I'm Corina, I'm from Madagascar, and I volunteered with an organization called Teach for Madagascar for four years. Uh, it's an educational uh, community organization that was founded by young people from Madagascar and I volunteered because I care about my community and I was looking for a way to contribute in a meaningful way because I love working with children so for me that was also a way to combine my passion for working with children with a cause that I really care about which is education. Um, most of our projects were aimed at underprivileged communities so we were going to high poverty areas just like mm -hmm. at core africa mm -hmm. and i also it really opened my eyes on the realities of poverty and in in my country which i was not necessarily aware of mm -hmm. and i think it's a great experience for local young people to really like emerge immerse in the in their own communities and learn about their communities because sometimes i feel like we take it for granted and we think we know about our country and our people but we don't until we really spend time That's such a great in the point. communities. Such a great point. Um, Bukar, anything you want to add to that? I'm trying to go to the next slide. There we go. Let me just back up and give you a little bit about Core Africa um, because it's just, like I said, an example of extreme volunteering. It's about national service, and national service is a form of volunteering. It's about stepping up to make your country a better place and being a good citizen um, and being active in what's happening and, and helping your, your fellow citizens um, have a better life. Um, and the second bullet, giving young Africans the transformative and the career-boosting benefits of the Peace Corps it's so important that young people are given the opportunity to get their hands dirty, to get out there, 
to listen, to experience, and to figure out, along with the people they're trying to help, to figure out how to make a difference. And if you can do that well, if you can really invest in this experience, you will get benefits from it that will last a lifetime. It will change you from within. Um, you cannot change like that from reading a book or from talking about it. You need to do something powerful. You need to give into it. You need to let it follow it wherever it leads you. And you know, the, the highs are really high, the lows are really low. It's it's really is about um, <laughs> learning about yourself and about um, figuring things out so that everybody benefits, the people that you're going to help and yourself. Um, and the third bullet is about demand-driven development and collaboration, evaluation, accountability, and transparency. This is about working with NGOs um, who are out there doing the good work trying to help, trying to make a difference. And by getting involved in it, we're all a part of holding all of us up to a higher standard um, and of making sure that the work that we're doing is actually making a difference and, and learning from our mistakes and, and moving forward and sharing our successes and helping um, everybody else be more successful so that our own countries are better off. Um, so this is, this is what Core Africa is about. It's a one year experience of young Africans. We're in Morocco, Senegal, Malawi, and Rwanda. And so far, we're just starting in those four countries. We hope to be in every African country eventually. Um, but it's really about taking a year of their life. Usually these are right after college, before they start their career and their personal, getting on the family and the career track, they take a, a year and move to a really remote rural community and live with local people as they do for a year. Um, and that is, that is a perfect form of volunteerism. It really is about taking the time to help other people. And, you know, the, the young volunteers, the Core Africa volunteers in all of our countries are model citizens. They are, they are really the best <laughs> of their country. They, they have something very special. Um, and let's see why I said that, you know, I didn't join Core Africa. I mean, I can join Peace Corps overnight. It was years of volunteering. It, it's really about what we look for in Core Africa and with other volunteer opportunities, what they're going to look for people to help them is that spirit of altruism, the spirit of, of wanting to make a difference, of, of being tired of complaining and being ready to get your hands dirty and just figure it out. Just do it. Stop talking about it and just get out there and do it and have the humility to know that you don't have all the answers and that if you want to help somebody, listen to them. This picture is really lovely. It's, these are a group of our current group volunteers in Senegal. This is during their training. Um, and this is one of the most powerful aspects of volunteering is that you meet people like yourself who have that passion. Um, when you join Core Africa, you, you, you have a, you, there is a cohort of volunteers and they have all joined for their own reasons. And they have all passed this rigorous test. They have had, they have a history of volunteering. They have, you know, strong work experience and good grades and, and they really are model citizens. What I look for most though is uh, the essay about why you want to be a Core Africa volunteer. They have something in them that is, and, and Bubakar and Kaluna both have this as well. It's this, this desire to make the world a better place and a commitment to being part of it. Um, and so this is a group of volunteers, you know, lifting each other up and fitting in. And, you know, everybody goes to their own site, but they have a community of people that are supportive of each other doing the same thing. And they're building friendships that last a lifetime. And that's another really important reason to volunteer, um, which is, to be part of this community, to find people like yourself. 
Bubakar, do you want to say anything about this? Uh, yes, yeah, thank you, Liz. I so my experience with Core Africa, um, for me, I developed my skills mm -hmm. and my knowledge. Mm -hmm. uh, with Core Africa, I am happy to participate in the process, my uh, in the process development of my country. Mm -hmm. So. It is um, very interesting to help vulnerable communities. If I see children sneeze because uh, I uh, give them just uh, some uh, song or another play, because I play with uh, they, it is a uh, very yes, it is very passionate. I'm uh, passionate about volunteering, and um, um, for me, it is uh, very important to identify our needs, but the community needs. Yes. Yes. Uh, you. you um, my experience with Core Africa, I developed myself. My myself, right. my uh, my personal development, my own development, right. but the project impact many lives. Right. Yes, and uh, I'm so proud to to see many people uh, glad and uh, happy because uh, um, the project the project changed their life. Right. Yes, and me. Now I have many opportunities to find a job and uh, to uh, participate in the meeting, yeah. con conference. So I uh, encourage many young to uh, begin in volunteering right. because uh, you can have after many opportunities and you can uh, find um job in the international organization mm -hmm. but it is not the it is not uh, the first objective the right. first objective is to impact and right. change another life yes and contribute in the process your community de development and your country development yes it's inspiring because, you know, I mean, for a lot of reasons, but as an American who, who went to Morocco to help Moroccans, it's, it's so empowering to see young Moroccans, young Africans stepping up to do what the Americans have been doing all this time. And they deserve the opportunity to do that together with the Americans. I mean, there's enough for everybody, but for young Africans to be getting out there um, and actually doing it themselves, as of course they can and should be able to do, um, but it, it's it's uh, it's very inspiring to hear you talk about that. Thank you. Anything you want to add, Kalina? Um, I think I can really relate to the point of volunteering helps you find yourself. I think that's how. Um, that's how I ended up doing this program in the US. It's because I started working with my community and realized this is something I care about and wanted to get more deeply involved in. So it's amazing. You guys are incredible. This actually uh, is a pictures of the point I was just making. On the left is a picture of me as a Peace Corps volunteer 25 years ago. I'm the one in the hat. <laughs> and then on the right is one of our volunteers in Malawi. That's Wesi. Um, and she's just teaching kids in her village and being a mentor for the young girls in her village. And um, look how similar they are. We're doing the same exact work. And um, it's, it's wonderful um, that it's happening and that young Africans are stepping up to take this for themselves and starting to do it themselves. Or they always have done it themselves. Core Africa is really just taking in the American model of Peace Corps and, and passing it on to young Africans to do. But there are Africans have always been very engaged in helping their own people and their own community, of course. Um, but this is really the model of 
getting out of your comfort zone and going far away and living in a high poverty village. And this is not easy. I mean, these are really the poorest areas of the country. There's very rarely is there electricity or running water um, and you're living in very basic conditions. Um, and that's, that's part of the experience. You have to live with people as they do, eat what they eat and sleep where they sleep to really understand their lives and to become part of the community. Yeah. <laughs> Passionate because uh, you yeah. can have you can have two families. Yes. Have your own family, but you have your host family. That's right. The family that you live with. Yes. Yeah. It's wonderful. They <laughs> they develop a second family. So these are best practices. Most of them we've already covered. Um, but really, it's about, if you want to volunteer, the most important quality is humility. If you want to help somebody, listen to them. What I just said about eating what they eat and sleeping where they sleep, um, you need to, and most of our volunteers actually learn a local dialect. And when you come in to live in a village and you learn their language, one of the reasons the Peace Corps has been so successful is these young Americans going to live in other countries and learning remote dialects makes people feel, you know, that you respect them, which is so important in, in these efforts in helping people in any NGO effort, but especially when you're, when you're volunteering. Um, the third bullet, we never fail, we either succeed or we learn, which is really important. You have to have the humility to be honest about the success or what's worked, what wasn't. In science, we learn as much from our failures as from our successes. So we need to talk about it. Um, and then, and that can turn it into a it's success. It can turn a failure into success by sharing it. Um, and so through volunteering, you, it's generally, even Core Africa, these are small scale, high impact projects. So, you know, we're not, these are not big ambitious efforts that are you know high risk and these these are really small things that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and if we can listen to what we're doing and make sure that we follow it wherever we leads um, it can build it can turn into a big success um, but we need to be able to talk openly and honestly and this is the transparency we were talking about earlier about um, about what we're doing and why something's working and why it's not, and then pass it on. The fourth bullet about, you know, it's not about painting a school. A clean school is not the point. The impact that it has on the students to go to school in a in a in a school that's freshly painted, how that how that changes their success in their classrooms and how that changes their lives is what's important. So that's just a little thing to keep in mind um, when you're thinking about helping. Um, think think long term. Think about the impact that it's making and why you're doing this. It's not to get up and paint a school. It's really about to help those kids who are going to school. Make them feel that you care about them to give them a healthy environment in which to learn so that they'll be successful. And the bottom bullet, I think, is the most important. It's not about you. You can volunteer to help your career. You can volunteer to, to get a group of friends. But ultimately, if you don't volunteer because you're helping other people, it's not going to work. You're not going to change other people, and, and then you're not going to change yourself. So, <laughs> and that's also part of the humility. Uh, it is very interesting, Lisa, because uh, if you are a volunteer, you can learn. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, learning, sharing, and um, and um, working. So working with with the community and um, impacting. Right. Yes, and uh, I hope the um, most. It is very interesting to list uh, listening because many people uh, came to um, uh, is confident to tell you right. the problem. Right. It takes a long time to build the trust. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and this is very important. If you listen to the community, you can identify 
uh, many problems right. and uh, you can uh, give your suggestion or uh, to uh, build together a, a, a big thing right but in core africa we haven't a big budget but our impact is uh, sustainable yes so can i oh mm -hmm. sorry i wanted to ask you we just came to our last slide before we take questions um, and I wanted to ask you to share the story about the kids in your village and how you were able to reach them, Bubakar. Do you remember yes. the story you shared with us, <laughs> with all the volunteers and everybody was? I'm more comfortable in, in French. In French. English is his I, fifth language, so I mean, kudos to you. You're so doing I tried to speak in English. You're doing great. Uh, if I. Uh, was the first time in my village, people is not very interesting. So why? Yeah, he's here, he can do anything here. They didn't understand why you were there. Yes, uh -huh. because you, we are poor and we haven't many, many resources. So he came here, he left the, the town, the town and come in this village for one year. Right. They didn't understand why Bubakar left his big city and went to live in a very poor small town. Yes, right. and uh, people don't understand uh, this. Right. It's not sense. <laughs> you you have your degrees and you come here for one year. Right. You uh, must find a job, and uh, me, I see many people is not interesting. I say wow. <laughs> But uh, I say, okay, I can do uh, something here. So I work with the children. I have many activity. Uh, um, I, I have the capacity to uh, to play with the children, mm -hmm. and uh, they have um, a, a little a little girl, mm -hmm. two years. Two years yes. old. Two years. Yes. Uh -huh. Field, and um, I uh, tell her, okay, we um, I can learn you a lesson. Teach so that, Yeah, uh -huh. I will teach you uh -huh. a lesson. And if I teach the children, and another children are interested. Yeah. If I, uh, yeah, I, uh, every every day in right. the morning. I play with the children and I teach them um, to um, one, two, three, and right. another, yes. the numbers and letters. Yes, number, uh -huh. And uh, we play with that. And uh, the mom, the mother, uh -huh. see that the ah, guy is very kind of. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, they ask me, uh, we, we uh, want to have a meeting with you and uh, explain your mission maybe we can uh, work together right. and uh, my integration is uh, ch children right. is my um, entryway yes my entryway <laughs> community that's a great story yeah, yeah. so true yes. it builds trust and now Bubakar is working with Francophile nonprofit yes. in Madagascar. In Madagascar. Right. Uh, and I'm a cooperation and entrepreneurship associate in the regional office of Indian Ocean right. in Madagascar. So it's helped you professionally yes. to have this service experience. Yes. And that's something that's special to Core Africa, the two tracks. Yes. It's the impact on the community and the impact on the yes. volunteer. Yes. Yes. And uh, before, international organization I work with uh, World Food Program. World Food Program, yes. that's right, that's right. And that we have a, a partnership with them yes. where they yes. hire Just former volunteers because NGOs are looking for people who have the experience yes. of living in a village, yes. which is not that common um, for college educated people who are looking for jobs at NGOs. And this is Abdu Kali in, um, in southern Senegal. I think I took that picture or somebody actually I think that's from him but it's just I visited him at his site it's, it's a wonderful gorgeous look at those women 
Karina, do you have anything to add before we get a question? Not really. <laughs> okay. Um, can we? Anybody have any questions? Thank you very much, Liz. You're welcome. We would, yes, we would. Um, Rachel here has compiled some questions, both from our Facebook audience and then. Oh, there we go. Uh, Yes, look for my Facebook audience and um, those online here. So she'll be reading out the questions to you. Okay. Hi, so the, one of the first questions we have um, is from Facebook and it says, it, um, most local projects on volunteering tend to fail to sustain projects. And how might we add volunteer projects with impacts that are empowered and sustainable? Right, um, that is a really, Good question, and it's the most important question. And it is another reason that we started Core Africa, not just to create Peace Corps for Africans, but to listen to communities, because we believe that that's how you create successful partners. It's not about what you think people need, it's what they think they need that's gonna be successful. Um, and we also require a 10% contribution in cash for the project. The community has to come up with 10% of the cost of the project themselves so that they're customers of it and not just charity beneficiaries. So they have skin in the game. And it's so incredibly important, this aspect. I didn't understand it at first when we started doing this, but it's that process of the community knowing they're gonna pay a little bit, it changes the whole dynamic of what they say they want and how engaged they are in the process. And so it's really about local ownership and that I think that's the simple answer it's a very big question and it's an excellent question um, but to me the, the the most direct and simple answer is make sure that it comes from the people uh, that are going to be using it and benefiting from it and that they're engaged in not just identifying the project but paying for it building it implementing it and sustaining it great thank you um, we have another question about Core Africa, um, asking if the program focuses on building strong bonds. Um, I'm guessing he means uh, strong bonds amongst the different volunteers in the program, um, as well as an alumni network. Yes, we are. I mean, the, the, the friendships, the bonding, the community between the volunteers, not just in their own country, but in the other Core Africa countries, getting to know each other across countries, building this Pan-African community is one of the most important parts. We are really trying to get our alumni association off the ground. In each country, we have an alumni group and try to get them to stay together. But we need to, right now, we're at the point where we need to invest in the infrastructure and of alumni association to provide ongoing professional development for the volunteers so that help them get secure high quality jobs, succeed in those jobs, and ultimately become job creators. That, that is really the long-term impact of Core Africa. So we are, we're working on the alumni network and that is something that will be a positive value for the volunteers for the rest of their lives. Builds on the service, their one year of service or, or more if they serve in other countries or extend, but um, it's something that we hope will provide a huge impact on the volunteers um, for decades to come, but that, that is a long-term project and we're working to get it off the ground now. Do you wanna say anything about the alumni network? Are, are you guys still in touch with each other in an organized or a disorganized way? Do you help each other? Uh, the alumni organization? Yeah, well, just your fellow volunteers that you served with, you still help each other? Yeah, yes, we, uh... We share many opportunity uh -huh. with uh, in our in our networking. Good. Yes, and uh, we uh, plan to organize uh, activity with um, school. Right. Yes, uh, and uh, we we support the volunteer in the field at the moment. Right. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful yes. to create. Yes, mentorship opportunities. Mentorship with, uh, wow, that's nice. Any volunteer. Great. Yes. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, we have another question um, from Zoom chat. 
that talks about um, so many young people in Africa look at volunteerism as, as a shortcut towards accessing full-time employment or earning some money or, or some form of livelihood. And when this doesn't come sooner than they expect, they end up dejected and more disillusioned. So how can this be de demystified so that volunteering is seen as a path towards learning, growth, and development? That is my dream. That is the goal. That is absolutely the goal, to create prestige and respect for this this experience of volunteerism. Um, but I'm not going to lie, it, it is a long haul we have in front of us. The, the practical situation on the ground is not easy. Um, I do think that while you are looking for work, being remaining active, getting out there, meeting people, doing things, learning um, is a very positive thing and, and might help you secure a job and might help you on your path toward whatever goals you might have. Um, do you have any ideas on that? <laughs> to make it more prestigious, to make it more respectable? I, I mean, I always tell the volunteers, it is so important that you are successful, not just at your service, but when you finish your service, yes. because you're creating the reputation for what we want to be seen as a professional volunteer opportunity. and their success is going to open the door to exactly what you're talking about having respect for service and volunteerism and that's going to create prestige which is going to open the door to more opportunities and you know bring in funding and also demand for young people make it competitive so that we do have you know raise the bar for for um for our volunteers but yeah it's about being taken seriously, it's, it's definitely getting there. And I think that Peace Corps did a lot by setting the a model of service that is, that is very prestigious. Um, and, you know, Core Africa, I keep talking about Core Africa, really this applies to all volunteerism. Core Africa is very extreme and it's not for everyone. Not everyone is cut out to go live in a rural high poverty village and that's okay. It's not supposed to be for everyone. But for those that it is for, um, it can be uh, it can be extremely helpful and supportive to, to your professional goals. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have we have another question about um, when is the best time to start volunteering? Since most NGOs sometimes receive volunteers, but most require background experience. You can volunteer, you know, I mean, you can set up a lemonade stand to raise small money for your local school for, for a fellow classmate who can't afford the school fees. Um, you can start at five years old. Um, and I think that if you do start at five years old or 10 years old or 15 years old, we're starting something in Morocco called Junior Core Africa, linking middle school students to Core Africa volunteers. And, having them visit the volunteers and do small projects for them and, and teaching them about this opportunity. Um, I don't think that's, there's a minimum age for volunteering and, and start small and that's going to lead to being accepted. What I'm looking for when I'm looking to hire a volunteer is, is the, the passion and that comes from everything that they do, not one or two things. It comes from how they see the world. Um, and by volunteering, it helps you, it helps clarify how you see the world. Do you Great, think, thank you. What do you think is the um, best age to start volunteering? Uh, for young? Yeah, well, I mean, there is no best age, I guess. The best is a passion. Yeah. Yes, passion uh, to, uh, to impact more passion, yeah. to, uh, to take your time for another person. Right. Yes. And sometimes, you know, I was really also inspired to start Core Africa Volunteer, um, Core Africa, because I met so many young people, especially in Morocco, um, who were seen as uh, charity cases. You know, NGOs were trying to help them, and their response was, do you want to help me? Help me not feel like an orphan. Help me not feel like a charity case. That's part of the problem. And so to give them a chance to help someone else is really about seeing them for themselves and seeing them as an asset and a resource rather than as a, a, 
a need or you know a, a problem um, and so it's about sort of turning the tables on how you see yourself and how other people see you by getting out and helping other people and anybody can help anybody you don't need money you don't need an education um, you just need the the desire Great, thank you. Um, so I think we'll do one last question. This question is actually from Saidu. He's our Youth Lead Ambassador from Burkina Faso. And he's asking if you can please share some tips for better volunteering in the context of insecurity. Uh, actually, Burkina Faso is, we're hoping to start Core Africa before too long in Burkina Faso. And one of the reasons is because um, the Peace Corps left Burkina Faso because of the security concerns in the country. Um, Core Africa doesn't have those same concerns because we're not Americans. We, are, we would be people from Burkina Faso and they're already there and they're looking for a way to help. And um, it would be complicated because we send them to live in rural areas on their own. We really count on the village, the community to take care of them. Um, but there are a lot of way there are a lot of communities in Burkina Faso that would be that would excel that would do, that would that would take care of the volunteer that are definitely um, safe enough right now to, to be a place we would feel comfortable sending a volunteer. Um, we train the volunteers in security how to how to take care of themselves, what to look out for. Um, but it is it is a challenge. Um, nobody joins Peace Corps, nobody joins Core Africa to be safe. I mean, you're going to live in high poverty villages where there's disease and, and there are a lot of security concerns. You do the best you can to take care of yourself. And um, what do you say to that? I mean, you're in a country like Burkina Faso where there's, there's a lot of conflict. And yet you have a lot of people who are just looking for a way. I mean, we have conflict here in the United States and you just have people who are looking for a way to be part of the solution. I mean, there are that, that you have to be creative sometimes, but security is a big concern, especially in a model like Core Africa. Um, anything to add? I don't think that answers the question. Um, I think Richelle is going to get one more question. Yeah, I think we'll just do one more question, um, and hopefully these are shorter answers. Um, we just had some interest um, from people asking if you have Peace Corps or Core Africa projects in Kenya, uh, Zambia, and Nigeria, and if so, how does one go about the application process? Or we don't. <laughs> I, I get these emails all the time from young people. When are you coming to Sierra Leone? When are you coming to Zambia? We are not there yet. And when we're not in your country, we can't provide this opportunity um, because we really do have to work closely with the local government, with the rural communities. Um, so I, I, I ask people to stay in touch with us. I ask them to reach out and, and volunteer wherever they can in their local community so that they'll be strong candidates when we do get to their country. Um, and if you have the opportunity to help us bring Core Africa to your country, let's talk. Um, money is the biggest issue, of course. Uh, um, that's really, money is the only thing stopping us from starting in new countries. But Having young people asking for this will help get the money, um, creating the demand, showing the world that there are young people who are eager to get out there, eager to get their hands dirty, eager to go help their own country. Hopefully funders will start to see that and invest in this opportunity to provide, to provide it. Um, so for right now, please stay in touch and please keep, keep doing whatever you can to help. Great, thank you. As you can. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Liz. Uh, thank you for the questions. It's been um, good having you share your experience and some of the tips uh, for successfully running um, um, for a volunteer program. And then thank you, Bubakar, and also thank you. Um, I forgot to the, 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 the 
Yeah, but uh, thank you for sharing those experiences and um, those useful tips. I would hand over to Ikina, um, who would um, wrap our, the... our website with people. I just saw somebody asking how to get in touch with yeah. us. It's uh, Core Africa, C O R P S A F R I C A dot O R G. Okay, and we we would definitely put that in the chat also, and then uh, we'll provide recording information to everybody on the call. Uh, so Ikena would help us round up the call for today. Really. Oh, thank you for really joining us. Thank you, now. Thank you very much, Apology. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Bubakar. Uh, thank you for everybody here in the room. Um, real quick, how can you join and contribute to the uh, Youth Lead platform? Uh, the first thing you do is you request to join at youthlead.org. Uh, complete your profile. When, you, when you're done completing your profile, you post projects, you contribute to discussions, you contribute and you earn badges to increase visibility. You subscribe to the monthly Youth Lead newsletter for updates. You also join and share um, on all of Youth Lead's platforms on the social media. You can contribute to the Twitter stream and spread the message using the, using the hashtag, hashtag Youth Lead Global and hashtag Youth Lead Webinar. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at Youth Lead Global. The same on Twitter at Youth Lead Global. Uh, you can also reach out to the speakers and continue the discussion about this topic in the Youth Lead Discussion Group. Uh, that's on um, um, www.youthlead.org forward slash discussions. Um, we can also, you, you can also, you know, join the conversation on Facebook uh, because we're going to be putting out the speaker's details on Facebook and also on Twitter, their email address, um, Lizzie's email address um, primarily, so that you can get in touch with her and, you know, continue the engagement moving forward. Once again, on behalf of um, everybody in the room, we would like to say a big thank you to Liz uh, and everybody in her room would like to also say a big thank you to everybody who has joined this webinar. We know that it hasn't been very comfortable, you know, um, in terms of the time differences. We also want to thank our Facebook audience. That's a major audience that we have. We also want to thank our, our Twitter audience um, because we're putting our tweets as it were. Thank you for participating in this webinar. The recording of today's event will be shared with all registrants on the Youth League platform. Please visit www.youthlead.org for more information. Have a good day today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, Bubaka. Thank you, um, everybody on the team. <laughs> okay. We can. Sorry, these are the questions. I had them running on a. Um, Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Oh.